In the next couple of minutes, I'm going to show you how you can significantly boost the speed of your TypeScript programs in a very clean and modern way by writing a cache decorator. I've already done a video that shows a similar technique in JavaScript using memorization. I'll leave you the link in the description below. One hint up front, decorators are still experimental and some details might change in future releases. In order to work with decorators, be sure to set the experimental decorators flag to true in your tsconfig.json file. Decorators work since ES5, but more features are available in later releases. Try to target at least ES2015 if you can. Now let's get started in writing our own method decorator for caching. Let's assume we have a repository class with a method getById that loads a person record from a database. To simulate the database round trip or API call or a complex calculation or anything that takes a long time, I will just await the timeout here of 200 milliseconds. So this forces the program execution to wait 200 milliseconds before we return the result from the function. And we return a very simple object representing a person record. So id and uh, a name. I'll make that fixed. Now let's write some code that uses the getById method. We write a method called loadPersons that would simulate the loading of several person records from the database. By using console time and console end time we can measure how long the code in between takes to execute. Now, let's try to call our getById method. First, we have to instantiate the person repository. And then we load the records and we output the results on the console. And you see, we await each method call. And I will do this also for another ID to make it more interesting. Anyways, you wouldn't do this exactly in TypeScript or JavaScript. Normally you would await all those promises at once. But to simulate more loading time and make our results even more impressive, we await every single call here. Now let's try to call our load persons method in order to simulate what happens if you invoke a long running operation without caching. As we see, every time the method is called, it takes roughly 200 milliseconds. One record is retrieved after the other with the same speed, even though we query the same persons AAA and BBB over and over again. Now, wouldn't it be nice if I could just write the word cache in front of the method and this would cache the method results respectively to what person ID or in general parameters are given. Well, that's exactly what decorators are for. So I'm going to show you how to write a cache decorator. A decorator is just a function taking a target a method name and a descriptor parameter. The descriptor is the key part and it holds a reference to the original method of the decorator. So we get the original method and store it in a constant. Now we define a cache map where we cache the function results. And then we overwrite the descriptor value, which is the function, with a new function. That's the key part of every decorator. So we define a new function that will be called instead of the original function. All right. And it will return some stuff. Right. And when I when when, when we try to execute this, you see, we successfully have overwritten the get by ID function. It always returns ABC. 
Now let's make this function a bit more intelligent. So first of all, we generate a key that we use to look up in the cache. If the cache has already an entry for the key, well, we just return the cached value. Otherwise, we have to calculate the real value. So for that, we need to call the original function or the original method and we apply all the parameters and we store the function's result in our cache. And then we are going to just return the result. And that's it. So now we can fill our cache and as you see, the overall time has been reduced to 400 milliseconds. Well, that's 200 milliseconds for AAA and 200, 200 milliseconds for BBB. And that's it. We have written our own cache decorator that can be used for any method. However, in real life, you don't have to write that kind of decorators yourself, since there are already some implementations of cache decorators available as NPM packages. One of them is the Memoize Cache Decorator, so let's install it. Then we need to import it. And then we can use it for our method by using its decorator name, Memoize. Let's try this out. And we see also the third party cache decorator works. It's even a bit faster than our decorator. And there are even more implementations available. This one here for example even provides advanced settings like caching strategy, time to live, caching scope and the injection of your own compare function. Decorators give you the power of coping with cross-cutting concerns in a clean way by using ideas of aspect-oriented programming. Let me know if you would like to see more examples of decorators or aspect-oriented programming or anything else by leaving a comment below. I'm happy to pick up your ideas to create new videos. Finally, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and share it amongst all your developer friends. And please support me by subscribing to the channel. Happy coding and see you next time!